Hi there and welcome to a four part series on how to incorporate YouTube as a music resource in your classroom. So the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to go to youtube.com and I want you to come up to the top right hand side here where we've got create account and sign in. So if you go ahead and click create account, enter in your email address and then for a username I suggest creating something that defines what the content you're actually going to be using in YouTube is. So for example, the school that I'm at is Melbourne High School, so the one that I've already created is MHS VCE Music. VCE, for those that aren't in Victoria, is the Victorian Certificate of Education, so the Year 11 and 12 studies. Um, enter in your other bits and pieces of information here, date of birth, um, location, etc., and then click I accept, and you'll receive an email through YouTube with a link to click through just to verify your account that you've created. Once you've done that, you'll come back to YouTube, the homepage, youtube.com, and you'll click sign in. And you'll, what you'll do is enter in that username that you just created. So mine was MHS VC Music. Enter in your password, and click sign in. Now it redirects you back to the main homepage. But what you will see now in the top right hand corner again is instead of saying create account and sign in, it now has your username that you've created and the sign out option. Now with your username, if you see here, it's got a drop down arrow. So if I click on that and I've got six options here, this is your navigation panel if you like to get between all the parts of your channel. So the first thing that I want you to do in setting up your account is simply click account and it will bring up the account page here. You've also now got eight little options up the top here, your videos and playlists, favourites, your channel, your video editor, subscriptions, insight, messages and your account settings. First thing I want you to do is you'll automatically be on the overview page, so I'll click it just to demonstrate, and I've got here the emblem, the logo for Melbourne High School, which is the unicorn, which I've uploaded as well, uh, so you can click change to get rid of it. And just to clarify, you can probably see here I have, you have videos that may, that may contain content that is owned by someone else. Please review these videos. Now with the issue of copyright, a lot of people have asked about um, is putting content on YouTube copyright. Well, if you create the content yourself, so if you record the video and you upload it, then and you're, you're not trying to market or make money from it, it's, it's essentially your property, so you're not, um, you're not breaching copyright. Even if you link on your channel, on your YouTube page, videos uploaded by, uploaded by other people, you're still not breaching content. What YouTube has and what it does is you might have uploaded a video of a performance of a composition written by somebody else, but YouTube has um, an automated system that searches for keywords in all its channels and it might recognize a composer or a name of a piece and say that it may be um, someone else's content. But it's not to say that you've breached the copyright or anything. You can go through and read about it. I've got a couple of videos a couple of Tchaikovsky pieces, so YouTube would have picked up Tchaikovsky and thought that possibly um, that might be content that I was breaching. Just as a, a warning, just to say to you, hey, just double check the information that you have and make sure you know, you're know you not breaching copyright. Okay, so after you've clicked overview and you've uploaded your logo, which is obviously optional, you've got things like your profile set up, so you can enter a description um, about your school, so describe your music. So I've put a description about Melbourne High School. Your website URL, so your school has a homepage, you can put that there. You might have your own homepage you want to put in there. Um, these other bits and pieces, personal details, um, which you can enter in, your age, um, hometown, etc., education. It's all optional information. In fact, all of it really is, is completely up to you, what you want to put in there. The next thing that you'll do, go down to playback setup. Okay, the defaults are fine, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, email options. Now, it says, how often can YouTube email me? So that email address you provided to log in, it's asking, can YouTube send you emails when some of these things happen? So if someone subscribes to your channel, do you want to be informed by email when you receive a message from your channel, etc.? So it's completely up to you. If you don't want anything, you can just click don't send any emails. Just make sure any changes that you make anywhere on your YouTube channel, that you always click save changes, because otherwise it won't uh, remember the option that you selected. Uh, we'll go down to activity sharing here. All right, if you have a, some schools have a school Facebook account or a Twitter account or um, etc., you can connect them. You can see here I have a, um, a Facebook account just to show you what you can connect it up to. And what that means is whenever you upload something on YouTube, it sends a message to your Facebook or your school Twitter account 
and lets people know that there's new content. You can completely control what is actually shown on those pages. You can see here, so if I take any of these actions, it'll show up on, this, on the school Facebook page. Once again, you can obviously uncheck those. All right, well, the most important issue we have here is privacy. Now, there's two ways that we uh, ensure that our content is private. Um, the first way, this is just a general channel overview. This isn't as defined as what we're going to look at uh, in the fourth video of this series. If you look here, it says search and contact restrictions. Allow only friends to send messages or share videos. So click that one. Otherwise, other YouTube users um, can leave videos on your page or, or um, send you messages, etc. If you're clicking that option, only people that you add uh, can actually do that. That's what it means by friends. So people you've actually who have a YouTube account who've added you've added them to your page. Uh, the other one is let others find my channel on YouTube if they have my email address. I've checked that because quite often another school may want to contact you. Um, you may be communicating by email, but they don't actually know your um, your username. So they might not know that MHSVC Music is my username, but they may have my email address. So by having that option, they can actually search for um, your account and for your YouTube channel. All right, the last two we can leave as they are, the mobile setup. You can actually, using this interesting email address, which is not easy to remember, you can upload videos straight from your mobile phone to your YouTube account. There's a couple of videos down here to show you how to do that. And then manage your account, things like, so you can see I was talking before about the copyright, um, account, set, account status, your account is in good standing. So though, as I said, they were just before, just some information just for me to check my videos. Um, you can close your account here, um, check all of your YouTube sessions, etc. All right, so we've now set up the account. It's ready to go. Um, we've got a couple of options up here which we can explore. So the next important link that we're going to look at is the My Videos and Playlists. So you can access it this way. So the way we got here, just to remind you, is Account and then My Videos and Playlists. Or you can just go straight to your username and click My Videos. All right, so you can see here, I've got a list of videos um, of content that I've actually uploaded. These are of student uh, performances as part of the Year 11 and 12 VC Music Performance. Now, I'll just quickly show you what our channel looks like, just so you can get an idea. So I'll just go to youtube.com, MHSVC Music. Now, you can see as the page loads up, the channel itself isn't completely um, private. And when I say that is all the video content that anyone in the world can actually access of our channel is video content uploaded by other people. So I haven't actually got any of the student performance videos visible to anyone anywhere in the world. Okay, only um, we'll look at the, when we look at the privacy, you can choose who can view your videos. But all these here, you can see on the sideline here, I have created different playlists that are relevant to the video content. So I've got a prescribed song list. So in VC Music in Year 11 and 12, we have a prescribed song list. So you have some video performances from some of those composers and artists. Uh, I've clicked some brass performances, great live performances, what not to do in a performance. It's quite often important to show students things not to do. A uh, bit of a comical Lego opera uh, and some great string performances as well. So the default video is a uh, brass ensemble. So just to show you what it looks like, you click on play. That's the default video. Um, you obviously can't hear the audio, but it will play along and you can choose um, any video you like as your default video. All right, so that's, the, that's our channel. So that's if you enter in that, you can all access that now. But if I come back to my YouTube channel page here with all my uploaded videos, I have all these student videos here. All right. Now, you can see next to them, it has the word private. Now, I've just made one public just to show you the difference. So it's got private, 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 public. Now, private means that that video is only viewable by people that I allow to see. And I'll cover that in more content later on. But that's just how you know whether or not your video is viewable by some people or by everybody. Public means that any, everyone can view it. Okay, so this is all your videos here. If you look on the left-hand side, um, you've got things like your favourites. So if I come to favourites, I haven't actually favourited any video yet, but if you go to a, a, anyone's video, so I'll just do a little demonstration. So if I went to YouTube, let's look at um, cats dancing. Quite irrelevant, but let's just, as an example, so... Let's look at some dancing cats. I will just stop that from playing. If you look at the bottom, below every video that you look at, you've got some options. You can like it or not like it. 
um, you can add it to a queue, which means that you've uh, it'll in your video viewing queue, if you've got a lot of different videos that you want to look at and you want to keep going between your different pages, you can do that. Um, you've got the share option if you want to share it with other people. You can embed it into your own website. Or you've got the option, if you click on the down arrow here, you've got the option of incorporating it into a few options there. So as you can see, we've got favourites option is one of the is one of the options there. Oh, my microphone has decided to uh, fall off the stand. That's all right. I fixed it now. Favorites, um, which is the favorites list I looked at. So if I go favorites and I add that to the favorites, you can see it now says this video has been added to your favorites. So I'll go back to my account, just refresh this page because I've now made, and there you go, dancing cats, go kitty go. That's been added to my favorites list. What that automatically does is creates a playlist called favorites. If you don't want it, if you don't want it, you can just get rid of it. Okay, so remove. Bye, cats. Right, um, I've also got a list of the queues, so the ones that you wanted to possibly look at later on if you're short of time, which us, uh, we as teachers often are, and the list of playlists. So you saw those playlists that I had created. Um, we'll just go back to our page. The playlists I had created on our homepage, so string performances, great life performances. You can see those down here, great life performances, etc. I've also got some ones that you can't see. So VCE Music Group Performance and VCE Music Performance. Now these playlists are where the videos um, that I have uploaded myself are contained, these uh, student videos, which I've made private. Okay, so we'll look at playlists and that sort of thing in part three. All right, so that's navigating around your channel. If you ever want to see what your channel looks like, you can just click on my channel. Um, anything else that you want to adjust, you can navigate through here. Um, so that's basically it for part one on how to set up your account. Um, if you now wanted to move on to part two, where I'm going to be looking at uploading and adding your own videos, as well as linking to other people's videos that you think might serve as a great teacher resource. So thanks for watching and enjoy part two.